Hey everyone, it's Megan and today I'm going to be doing a video that I'm really excited about. I'm doing a tutorial on the look that Charlize Theron's character Ravenna wore in the movie Snow White and the Huntsman and I saw that movie a few weeks ago and I loved it. Like I would recommend everyone seeing it. It was really good and Kristen Stewart was surprisingly amazing as Snow White so anyways you should definitely see it. Um, but this look is going to be what Ravenna, who is the evil queen, what she was wearing in the final scenes, like the final battle scenes in the movie, where she was wearing a black crown and like she looked especially evil. And I just thought it was such a striking look and I loved it. The moment I saw it, I knew I wanted to recreate a look. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And surprisingly, it's very few products to achieve this look. It just takes a while with like blending and stuff like that. So um, I'm just going to get started. I'm going to do eyes first. So I'm going to be using my NYX High Definition Eye Base. And this is just an eye primer. You could use whatever you want to. You could use the Urban Decay Primer Potion Too Faced Shadow Insurance. If you have really dry eyelids, like you don't have to use any primer. So if you don't normally use a primer, you don't have to, but I do because I have very oily eyelids and I want this look to stick around. The only eyeshadow that I'm going to be using for this look is Max Carbon, which is a matte black. So if you have any matte black in your collection, use that. This is just the one that I picked out for this tutorial. Um, I'm sure that there are many matte blacks like around in the eyeshadow world. I know that there is one in the Coastal Sense 88 Warm Palette, which I have. I also have one that's by Makeup Designery. And um, Wet n Wild probably has one in one of their palettes. But if you can't find a matte black shadow, you can use a black shadow with some shimmer. It, it works better with a matte shadow, but it's fine if you have shimmer. I'm using a Sephora smudge brush, which is just like a, this really um, short brush. And it's like pretty dense. And I just have some of the carbon on there, so I just sort of press it in to the brush, brush bristles. And I'm going to first map out the shape of the eyeshadow. And I'm going to post a picture down below of the the picture that I used to um, like put all this together and to really recreate the look because I obviously couldn't remember everything from just seeing the movie once. But um, what I'm going to do is you're going to pretend that you're, sorry if I'm looking over here, this is where my mirror is. You're going to pretend to elongate your bottom lash line. So if your lash line just kept going up, that's how you're going to do it. And you're basically going to extend it almost until the end of your brow. So we're just going to start doing that. So right about there. And I practiced this last night, so I obviously didn't get this right on the first try, first try but um, this is what I figured out was the best for this look. So I'm just going to do the same on the other side. So just like sort of hold it at the edge of your eye and then pull up. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit like crazy, but then you're going to sort of like relax your eyes so don't be like this or <laughs> something. Like I do that sometimes when I do my eye makeup. And you're just going to take the end of that and pull it over like straight. And then um, you go into your natural crease a little bit. So now you have this nice mapped out wing that you are going to use for your eyeshadow look. And basically this whole look is about placing color and then blending it. So we just place some color and now I'm going to take this little hip, L'Oreal hip um, brush that comes with their pigments. Um, really just get any brush that's um, like short but a little bit fluffy. And you just want to blend out um, these edges because while the shape was really defined, it was soft at the same time, which um, 
sort of confused me when I was first like planning on doing this look because I didn't know how something could be like really defined but still soft but that works when you like do a pretty heavy application for like mapping it out and then blending it a little bit. So I have blended it but you can still see the shape which is what you want to do. You don't want to completely buff away all of the color because that would defeat the purpose. So what you're going to do, I'm using the same smudger brush. Um, I'm just tapping, I'm pressing the brush into the eyeshadow to get a lot of pigment onto the bristles. And you're going to place this eyeshadow on your eyelid and into the shape that you created. And you want to go two-thirds of the way in, so you're going to want to stop about there. So stop like basically where your iris ends. So you have a nice open inner corner. Then you're going to take that same brush that you um, blended out the edge and you're just going to blend this. And this is what takes the most time, is the blending. And you want to go into that, like, clear, or go into that part of your eye where you don't have any pigment. You want that to be a little bit lighter, but you still want shadow to be placed on that. So you're going to want to blend into that open space. So it's not as dark as the rest of the lid, but it still has, like, shading. So you're just going to keep going back into your black color, placing it on the outer part of your eye. Especially near your lashes. And then you're going to want to continue blending because you want it to be a really saturated color. You can also take a bigger fluffy brush and go into that inner corner and around your crease because that's where you want the least amount. So that will help like buff a little bit more away. Now I'm going to do the other eye. Okay, so now that you have the upper lid done, you're going to want to take the same smudgy brush and get some more of that black on the tips of the bristles. And you're just want, going to want to go along your lower lash line. And again, you're going to want to do two thirds away in and leave most of the inner third of the eye free of any shadow. And you definitely want this to be smoky. But you're just going to deposit the color and then we're going to blend it out like we did for the whole eye. So I'm going to take that same blending brush and just blend out 
along the bottom. But I'm sweeping it all the way in to the inner part of my eye. Keep wiping your blending brush off on like a towel or something because it really helps so then you have a clean brush every time you go back to blend so you're not like spreading around like extra pigment. And you want it to go pretty far down. I don't usually put shadow or anything on the lower lash line so this is pretty like far down to me. I don't know if other people go down further on a typical everyday basis but this is like pretty far down and pretty like vampy and smoky to me. Now I'm going to take my Steel Caudrel Eyeliner in Onyx, which is a really deep, rich black. And this is my favorite eyeliner to do like really dark waterline and tight line like eyeliner. So I'm going to apply this to my waterline, tight line, and also on my upper lash line. Since this pencil is really creamy, you're probably going to need to sharpen it before you do your upper lash line. But you're just going to really get into the roots of your lashes and also make like right at the base of your lashes, so right at your lash line, you're going to make it a richer black color. I'm going to take my smudger brush and go back over it with the carbon. And then I'm going to blend some more. You might want to clean up a little bit in your tear duct area just so that's still like not as dark as the rest of your look. Now I'm going to curl my lashes. I'm using the e.l.f. eyelash curler. I'm applying my Revlon Double Twist Mascara in Blackest Black. I really wouldn't recommend this mascara because it's sort of annoying to work with. So when you pull it out of the stopper so much comes like w attached to the brush that you have to like wipe a lot of it off but for this look it's fine because you want like pretty defined lashes that are super dark and then you just want to apply a very little amount on your bottom lashes For the foundation in this look, Ravenna Skin is absolutely like perfect and flawless. So you want to use a full coverage foundation. I'm going to be using my L'Oreal True Match and I'm in the color N1 Soft Ivory. To apply it, I'm using a slightly dampened makeup sponge because this foundation does like set pretty quickly. And I want to have time to like work it into my skin. So um, you just want to have basically one color canvas all over your skin. And that might take a little bit of time and you might need to use like different products than you do in your everyday, but that's just the look. So you could also use Revlon Color Stay. I know a lot of people like that as their full coverage foundation of choice. Then I'm taking my under eye concealer, which is All May Wake Up Concealer, and I'm in the shade Light. 
I'm just going to put that under my eyes just to have a even more perfect flawless complexion. That's basically as perfect of a foundation as I can do, um, but now the final touch is contour. And in the image and in the movie, Ravenna has an extremely prominent cheek contour. And I'm using the Makeup Designery blush in the color Brick. This is a intensely pigmented like brownish red color and this was the perfect color I looked at the picture and I looked through my makeup stash and this was basically the perfect thing because her contour wasn't really like a brown it was more of a rosy toned and I think this is perfect I'm using the elf angle blush brush and then I also have my e.l.f. Kabuki if I have to blend any out, but it's mostly completely defined and just blended up a little bit. So you're going to apply a lot more contour than you normally would on a everyday basis, but this is a very dramatic look. And why you have like porcelain perfect skin is because Ravenna like thrives off of the beauty of others. So she is like gorgeous and like flawless. So this contour just accentuates like her like psychoness, I guess, like how strict she is. And this really brings the whole look together and really makes it look like you're an evil queen. So you're just going to start building up this color. And with this particular color, it is not hard to build it up really quickly. And you just want it from the back of your hairline to like right around your mouth. You're going like right towards your mouth. And you're going to feel like super crazy at first, but when you blend it out, it's going to look awesome. And if you need help, finding your contour lines you can either if you're like in light you can see your natural shadows and that's where I go or you could go like and it's like right there in those hollows In the picture, it's like blended up, so you want to sort of go a little bit higher with it as well, and then blend out. Finally, for lips, I'm using the Revlon Soft Nude. So basically any nude color, but this is the perfect one, I think. Because when it mixes with your lips, it's hard to talk doing lipstick. It has a sort of pinkish tone. So this is just the perfect color, I think, and it brings out the like rosiness in the um, brick color that we use for contour and I think this is a gorgeous look like I love it I think it's very intense and like very striking but in a very beautiful way um, 
if you can see Snow White and the Huntsman, I definitely suggest you go out to do it. Um, Shirley's Theron was absolutely amazing and her makeup looks are gorgeous. I know the makeup artists in there are much more talented than I am, but this is a like very few product look and I think a lot of people would have these products. A matte black, a full coverage foundation, a you could even use like a dark blush for this look. Um, this was just what I had in my collection and I didn't go out and buy any of these things. I shopped my stash and I used what I had and I really love how this turned out. Um, you could use this a Halloween makeup look as well, but I was just really inspired to do this look and I hope you all enjoyed. Um, leave any feedback down below and thank you so much for watching. Bye.